I'm JD, the Media Jack, and welcome to another episode of the Media Jack podcast. Today's guest is B York, a online content creator who is a bit of a nerd, very, very delightful, bubbly, and creative as well. She's a bit of a craft beer aficionado, or as she liked to put it, a craft beer snob. Before we get into the interview, though, a big thank you yet again to my Patreon followers and those who are helping me create this for you. If you would like to help out and support everything I do here, just search for the Media Jack on Patreon. And a big thank you yet again to this month's executive producer, Red Wolf Don. If you would like a shout out or be a part of the community, take part in game nights. Again, the Media Jack on Patreon. Now, without further ado, this is B York. And we're starting off with how exactly nerdy is she? I always feel like it might be a little bit of a cop out, but I mean, throughout my whole life, I've been pretty, pretty in tune with various fandoms um, to the point where I'm definitely not nerdy. Okay. Um, so, of course, you know, it's it's a nice little thing to dig into, um, at least as an adult entertainer. So definitely let my my true personality shine, even if I'm not that nerdy <laughs> well there's there's no bar requirement like you have to hit this point of nerdism to be considered a nerd like we you're allowed to be considered a nerd to your own you know discretion right hopefully <laughs> hopefully no one's like you know what you don't you haven't read all the books you don't know everything <laughs> that's funny i just having a conversation with someone else it's just like we're talking about naruto and anime and stuff like that and it's like i, I you know flat out admitted so far behind on anime a fan Ooh. of it but just like you know, I, I am nowhere near as informed as the, the common person these days. So same <laughs> anime is like one of those things where it's very like there's so much to consume that I mean, I just I don't have enough hours in the day. And a lot of people ask, like, what's your favorite anime? What's your favorite anime? And I'm like, uh, I haven't had a chance to like sit down and like have a period of time where I could watch something with subtitles um, <laughs> and like thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah. How did B York become B York? Well, it started many years ago. Um, I think I think we're going on six and a half years. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an avid redditor. I came across the um, possibility of selling panties. I had a very large stock of things that I was trying to get rid of, mm -hmm. clothing wise, and then I had all these panties, and I was like, "Oh, you should." It would be a shame to just toss it. Yeah. Um, so, of course. Being an avid Redditor, I researched what I could do because there's a subreddit for everything, literally. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that kind of is what led me to, um, I mean, through various, you know, things and snowballed into being an adult uh, content creator. Hmm. Did you ever picture yourself as being uh, a, an adult content creator? To be perfectly candid, mm. I didn't because I thought there was a lot of, um, I thought you needed to look a certain way. And for a majority of my adult uh, life, I was not very um, thin or had that very like aesthetic that you see it wasn't until i was introduced to like indie performers and see that they that we all come in so many shapes and sh sizes and and styles that i like realized that i had a space where i could thrive so was it the physicality and a body dysmorphia that basically was holding you back like was this something that uh maybe you kind of threw around uh in your younger years yes and i don't think i've ever actually shared that with anyone but um i've always been drawn to like odd jobs and like various different like career paths and i always said like you know if if i this is gonna sound terrible oh, okay <laughs> absolutely terrible if i had reached my goal weight i was like 18, 19 at the time, I was like, if I reach my goal weight, you know what, I will become a dancer. Hmm. Um, I never made that goal and never went down that route um, because of my own like mm, 
problematic mindset of right. being 18, 19 on, um, but that's another story. But like my other idea was like, if I wasn't working this, you know, I would totally want to work in a porn shop. Like I was just always drawn to adult work and, and that industry, but I just felt like, oh, maybe I'm not good enough um, in a way of, of saying that. So yeah, essentially to answer your question, yes. <laughs> so, okay. Like I, I didn't mean to get deep so quickly, but it's just, yeah. Little... <laughs> yeah. and I, I'm sorry for that. But um, it, it, for the past six years, you have been working your way from the simple and uh, niche thing of selling panties uh, to uh, where you are now. And um, like, what was this transition like to go from trying something off of Reddit and getting this idea and then making it making it almost like a profitable or a profitable scenario to where you are today. Like, what was this like you looking back? What's that like for you? It's definitely like, like an evolution. Really? Like you go through different phases of like, this is what I'm comfortable with. This is what I'm, you know, good at. This is what I'm doing and growing. Um, and now like looking back, of course, there's like a million things that I would totally want to do differently, but it's just, it's kind of fun to look back and think of like, oh, I was a little baby seller. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, like I was just, everything was done on my phone and, and, and with terrible lighting. Like there wasn't as much strategy because it's also new. So it's just like do everything. Mm -hmm. And then seeing it grow and blossom into something where like, I'm at the point where I'm not just providing a service and not just creating content to, to, well, get people off. Right. Um, but I'm also at a point, um, because of it all that I'm creating like really, really cool creative scenes and stuff that, you know, while it may not be the best, most amazing thing, it's still really cool. Um, like for example, this wall behind me, um, which, uh, yeah, I made that really um, for photo shoots. That's beautiful. <laughs> I, like, and I honestly thought that like you had a blue screen going on and this was someone else's artwork. That is stunning. Thank you. Um, yeah, I definitely couldn't like put that together as, as an idea, as little, little baby seller me mm. six and a half years ago. <laughs> um, but now I like, I get to put creativity into what I do mm -hmm. um, more so than I ever did before. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that uh, is is common with people in the adult industry is uh, the support of their fans and the support of their communities. Now, you taking that step and finding an avenue that you didn't think was even there before, uh, what was it like finding out that not only was that avenue down there for you but also like you started to clearly get support from fans and people who were just like aghast by what you were capable of and your natural beauty um, it's sometimes very very wild and hard to wrap my head around mm. uh, <laughs> because I've always been kind of modest and um in in my personality and very like you know kind of to put it bluntly I'm pretty timid um when you really know me so I was never quite like the person that toots their own horn or or makes you know makes a lot of stuff up. I'm not always the main character in my story and okay and I've always been okay with that right for the most part <laughs> and to <laughs> to be like essentially catapulted um into like a space where i have thousands and thousands if not hundreds of thousands of fans that are are there to like support me and cheer me on it's just it's a lot it's fun and it's fascinating and it's crazy to think that millions of people have have uh jerked off to me at some <laughs> point yeah, <laughs> it still blows my mind. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be flattering at the very least. Oh, yeah, it de it definitely is. Like, mm. I would not be doing that if I didn't find that to be 
really awesome. Yeah. Um, but it's just like me, really <laughs> me. Are you sure? So have you, you've clearly had the opportunity to work with other people in the adult industry. Uh, again, like starting off baby steps, you only, you've, you've been at this for uh, roughly six, six, six and a half years. Yes. So once you start getting those invites and things start progressing beyond, uh, the baby steps from where you started, like, uh, like what were you hoping for and what was, what was the end result and how did it come across for you as a different mindset? I don't, I don't know if there was a point where like, I expect this and this exact thing is going to happen mm. when I do this, because in this industry, it's so different for everyone. Mm. And sometimes it's really like, I mean, your success can be based off of just going viral. Um, and that could be enough. Um, sometimes your success is just having those right connections. So you get in with like the right studios for pro porn production, right. um, and stuff like that. I think, I think within like, I would say the past two ish years, I've kind of been within the mindset of, yeah, I do want to achieve things but I kind of just want to see where things take me mm. when I'm consistent, um, with what I'm doing. Yeah. Fair enough. So you, you, you've had the unfortunate incident of your career just starting to gain ground and then the entire world shut down for damn near two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I would, I would assume that someone who started off their business and started off their career working from home like this, maybe was a moderately simple transition for you, but were you able to, or are you able to attend like uh, conventions, uh, giant events and, and meet your fans in person? So I think I got so lucky. I feel really terrible for saying that, but mm. I got pretty lucky um, with, so before I left my previous job, it was early 2019. So I had lots of time to kind of figure myself out as um, a full-time uh, adult content creator mm -hmm. um, and get my, my bearings and build up my platforms. So when the bad part of 2020 hit, you know, I was, I was able to just focus on building myself as a, as a, monolith as an empire Fair enough. <laughs> before that i had only ever really attended two aee avn events one in early 2020 yeah before everything happened and then one in um early 2019 yes because it was right after that that i was like you know what if i want to go somewhere in this this world i need to leave my job but you know i was still like a nobody at those points at that point. Um, so when I was able to do my very first in-person um, meet, which was at the X3 Expo mm. um, in January, it was, I mean, I'm, I'm still a very small name um, amongst many, right. um, but it was still fun to be like, people knew me, they knew me. <laughs> um, and you know, this is still like early on with things opening up, so. Right. It was a little mind blowing to be like me. Oh, oh, I'm like chatting with someone. And I'm like, oh, you want to talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> now, do you uh, majority of your work? Correct me if I'm wrong. Majority of your work uh, now is based off of uh, cam work. Uh, it's mostly subscription based, so subscription -based. premium subscriptions. Um, all at OnlyFans. Oh, um, okay. Which, you know, seems to have been a power horse or powerhouse for many people um, mid pandemic. That's kind of where my main focus is. And then I dabble in like a few other things mm. um, just to kind of round me out and keep things interesting. So if someone were to go to your OnlyFans page, what would they expect to see? A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. So you're versatile. <laughs> I 
would like to think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but then again, sometimes I go through like holes where I'm like, are you sure people aren't going to get bored of like this post just in different lingerie? I like to do a lot of role play videos. I also like to do a lot of photo sets. Um, one of my things the past year and a half is I got my very first um, fancy digital camera. Oh. Um, so I've been deep diving in photography. Um, so each week I kind of try and plan something together or I share something that I've done um, with a professional photographer. Mm. Um, but it's been really fun kind of like, I don't know, a lot of people have been so sweet as I like grow and become more creative and when it comes to photography and, and also cinematography and mm. not just the porn side of it. But yeah, it's like a mix of stuff. Mix of it's like stuff. role plays, photo sets, short videos. It's one of the few places where I post a lot without makeup. I guess not that much. I only do it one day a week, but still <laughs> people seem to love it. Yeah. Is it is it because people are seem to be drawn just to the the natural charisma that you have, possibly? Yes. Yes. Totally that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think people like to see like the the very um, you know easygoing, laid back, the the true girl next door mm. who um, you know looks like heck when she rolls out of bed. It, you know, it it happens to all of us. We don't all look like supermodels as soon as that alarm goes off, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You were asked to be on the cover of a magazine. Yes. Um, it Congratulations. Was oh, thank you. It was my own photo that made the cover too. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. That was my ego like, <laughs> um, yeah, it was the Expos clip world side of there. So just for clip artists, um, it's a easing that they do. And yeah, I felt so honored to, to be on the cover. I was like, me, me, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> There's that thing again. <laughs> you, you have the right person. Are you sure? So that was that, like, that's, that's something that not many people in this world can say that they have been on the cover of a magazine, especially so since it's your own photo, like the photo that you took. Like, do you have, do you have that framed somewhere or do you have like copies that people can get autographed? Like you, you must have a collection somewhere. Well, I mean, that particular photo I did have printed. Um, and then I link it on my website, mm -hmm. um, which I do need to update. I should remember to do that. <laughs> I haven't figured out how to get that actual like article and magazine printed. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that would be fun to like flip through. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's actually funny because that particular photo did very poorly on Instagram. And, but it's like one of my favorite photos. It's just, it doesn't show butt cheeks and therefore Instagram hates it. Ah, um, <laughs> but it's like, it's a photo that I use for like profile pictures and everything. Cause it's like a very cute um, portrait. Mm. So what type of content do you, like in a perfect world, if you could just make your own content in, in a specific genre or a specific way, like what type of content do you prefer to make? And what type of content would you hope to make in the near future? The truth is, is that I really, really like dabbling in a lot of different genres when it mm. comes to at least like specific kinks and, and niches. Mm. But I think what I love most, I wish I could just have like more hours in the day to just constantly do fun, creative things. Right. But like, I, I love when I'm able to spend a full day on one particular photo set or video, because then I have the time to like really mess with lighting. I still need to learn a bit more about, um, but I can mess up, mess with like the scene and stuff and kind of like make things pretty. Mm. I love doing that. This this wall was uh, featured in a photo set and a video um, where it was like a tea party themed. And and I love that because it was outside of my normal like filming space and, and like it just brought that extra layer of creativity. Right. So I wish I could do scenes like that, like built up scenes that all the time. So I think in the future, I would like to just build on that, that idea of, of, putting a little bit more feeling and emotion into my work. 
on the creative side. On the creative There's side. lots of feeling and emotion when I'm acting. I, I, <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. um, I have a fun little cliff note here, and I, I was hoping that you could elaborate on this. You brew craft beer. I I don't. No. Um, no, I'm just a craft beer enthusiast. Oh, you're an enthusiast. My yes. apologies. It just said. Sorry, I'm, I'm a beer snob. Oh, there's nothing wrong <laughs> with that at all. <laughs> yeah, so, I know. I mean, others might think so, but I'm not drinking any swill. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. I, 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 I wrote that down wrong. So you are a craft beer snob. So how long has this been a part of your life? Well, I'm going to say since I was um, 21. Sure, a legal age. <laughs> Actually, fun story is I would probably say it was since I was 18. Okay. Because I drove up to Canada. Ah. But the legal drinking age is 19. But yes. we didn't know that until we got there. But fortunately, no one cards. Right. Um, so sorry, Vancouver, <laughs> putting you on blast. <laughs> but oh it was a God. wonderful time. I had wonderful, like, nice beer for the very first time. Mm -hmm. It was much better than the crap you drink when you're an 18 year old. Yeah. Um, so I think that that was like the first instance of setting me on the right path when I was um, 21 and living in San Francisco and around so many good breweries. <laughs> So many good breweries. So what's your brew of choice? So I would probably say my top pick is Boundary Bay Scotch Ale. Oh. Um, and they're, they're a little bit north from me. Right. Um, I forget. Past Belling? No, before Bellingham? I don't know. Somewhere, somewhere up north. But yeah, it's like, it's dark and very flavorful and I really like it. Yeah. Other than that, I usually go for like stouts and browns and reds. Yeah. So IPAs anywhere on your radar at all? No. Oh, God. I mean, I'm so sorry, Seattle. You seem to love IPAs so much, but it is just too bitter for me. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not arguing. I'm not a fan of IPA either, but uh, one of my uh, coworkers is actually, he brews IPA and he's, he's like, oh, this thing is so sour. It's good. I love it so much. It's like, yeah, fucking keep it. <laughs> Just keep it away from <laughs> it. So, so stouts uh, are big on your list. Um, do you like, like when I think of stout, like the first thing that comes to mind is a Guinness. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that, like oh. That's the standard right there. But uh, are there any others that are like on your radar? Nothing that I can think of off the top of my head because mm -hmm. um, I usually just like to try whatever a brewery has but if they have like a chocolate or or um coffee stout even though I don't like coffee I will totally try it out really um just because they're good <laughs> it's it's that rich dark aroma and flavor that really sets it off for you yeah yeah have you ever done like a a, a beer cruise or a beer tour I did do a beer tour um, when I, shortly after moving to Seattle. Okay. Um, and it was really fun because they took, they took us to like four places, I think. But it was, it was awesome. Would, uh, what type of, uh, of a cruise or a tour do you, like, do you have plans to do one in the future? Or maybe, you know, would you ever dabble in crafting your own? I would love to try you know like a cruise or i didn't know a cruise was an option mm. um but any sort of tour i think is fun mm. yeah i would be down if i if i knew some good ones so if anyone has suggestions <laughs> let me know <laughs> um i used to want to my idea when i retired um was to open up a brewery of course now I still have no actual knowledge on beer making, <laughs> but you know, I have plenty of time to figure that out. Oh, yeah. So maybe, maybe it'll happen. Um, other than that, I do have, now, we keep talking about this, but I have this kit that my friend bought me on Christmas and I need to finally use it. <laughs> so something hopefully in the future, you know, you have some spare time. <laughs> you, yeah. Could be a crossover. You think about it. It could be uh something someone might 
purchase under a paywall from OnlyFans? Yeah, uh, I was just thinking as you were saying that, I was like, huh, I could do like a whole series about this where people just, you know, just just wear some cute lingerie and like go through the process of, of making said beer from this kit and like, you know, hmm, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm going to use that. <laughs> A whole new world for B York. <laughs> <laughs> nerdy, but not too nerdy. Uh, curvy with an incredible fan base and community, uh, still growing within the past six and a half years, and uh, a beer snob who uh, stay, steers away from IPAs, bless your soul. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what is in the future for Miss York? More of the same. More of the same. <laughs> Just yeah. bigger and better as I, I carry on um, in the near future of like a few few minutes from when we wrap this up. Mm -hmm. I'm about to work on my sexy Boba Fett oh. photo that I've had <laughs> on awesome. my mind for like over a month now. Wicked. So, that sounds I'm like fun. About that. Yeah. Well, ho hopefully it looks good. Um, I got a helmet and I got a nice little, little blaster and yeah, hopefully it's all pretty. Awesome. I look forward to seeing that. A, a quick question for you and uh, something I, I like to uh, ask people in the industry is uh, if you had an opportunity to speak to someone who is a, a younger version of you or someone who is, you know, possibly uh, considering starting in the adult industry, but they're unsure, like what advice would you give to someone who is kind of on that precipice of taking that first step? I would say like a younger version of myself really needed to hear that there's, there's an audience for everyone. Mm. Um, and, and I think that's important because that was my largest deterrent from entering the industry um, is just being like, are, are they really going to like me? I am so basic looking. Um, I'm not like porn star hot, but you know, I'm still doing fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So like you can be very successful no matter who you are. As long as you tap into your authenticity, you're good. Awesome. I really do appreciate the time you spent with me today. Where can someone find you on social media, online? It's always easiest to just Google B York probably because then you can kind of decide wh where you want to um, consume my my media. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, my favorite place is probably Instagram, even though the algorithm hates me. Um, and that's you be York. Um, it's you because I started on on Reddit. Okay. And I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> so you be York. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. I really do appreciate the time you spent with me today. Hey, I'm so happy to be here. I feel feel honored. <laughs>